I've worked in developing countries since I was drafted by the Army in the Vietnam War, and I saw the fact that many people don't have equality of fracture care. And this has been our theme, this is our vision of creating a quality of fracture care throughout the world. We all have a patch to hoe, and, and this is our patch. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you very much. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> we believe strongly in our vision statement, and every decision we make, we make with our vision statement in mind. To accomplish our vision statement, we have a mission statement, which is education of best fracture care and a supply of appropriate implants, a continuous supply, so the surgeons have an array of the proper sizes to use and the proper instruments to use to implant the sign nail. Meeting Dr. Zirkel and seeing this huge vision that he had and at the time, it seemed just too big, trying to supply these implants and do the training and everything that he talked about. But he jumped right in and began developing and making these implants. And for me as an engineer and being connected to that problem, helping to solve that problem and, and helping Dr. Zirkel personally has just been a wonderful kind of journey over these last 15 years. What we do is to supply the education and the instruments and implants to hold the fracture in place while it heals. This is very important because if they don't have an implant to hold the fracture in place, the fracture will drift, the fracture will shorten, and disability will result in the patient. This is particularly harmful for the wage earner, the, the parent of a family because the whole family spirals into poverty for three generations according to WHO statistic. I think on the very first visit, even the first phone call, you know, wanting him to come and visit us and, and certainly meeting him in person and seeing his enthusiasm and just his, I think it's this insight as far as how education and supply and all of these pieces you know, kind of could connect. I think even before he may have understood, you know, each the importance of each piece, but he certainly yeah, had this vision of what he wanted to do that was just very compelling. We now have 270 projects in 56 countries. So we've expanded both in terms of number of projects, we've expanded in terms of the implants that we give. We just started out treating the long bone fractures, which are in the shaft of the femur and the tibia. But now we can treat hip fractures. Now we can treat pediatric fractures. Pediatric fractures are important because the child has to use that leg for a long time. But there are growth centers which must not be disturbed or the child has a growth problem later on. So this is a very specialized implant. There's a rising epidemic of fractures. There's a rising epidemic of road traffic accidents around the world. Trauma, including road traffic accidents, kills more people between the age of 5 and 44 than AIDS, malaria, and TB combined. But this has not reached the attention of the grant givers and the people who give money to nonprofits. So we have to face the fact that the subject that we treat, fractures, is not thought to be a problem as AIDS, TB, and malaria is. So it's a, a big problem in frequency. It's also a big problem in severity. A, a person who has a fracture has a agony. Agony because physical, it hurts. Economic, because they have to buy their own implants to have the surgery unless sign donates them. But the agony of the family is huge because the family spirals into poverty for three generations when the wage earner or the parent is disabled. This is a big deal and this causes psychological agony. It causes the agony of the fact that you don't have control of your life anymore if you don't have a good leg to stand on or a good arm to use. So uh, this is a big deal and we feel very strongly that what we do it is a cure for that. In other words, a patient who has uh, a fracture 
can, in that fracture heals, should come out with the same amount of ability and capacity that they had before the accident. Well, personally, I've been very proud to be associated with Dr. Zirko and Sign and all the people um, at Sign, including the physicians who are overseas and have been part of Sign. I think seeing the project grow from this very small project, just serving one country, a couple hospitals, to now becoming this global kind of force in orthopedics has really just been wonderful. Looking back, you can see how those pieces were kind of in play right from the start, but to see them actually, you know, happening on a daily basis, you know, a hundred times a day uh, overseas is really remarkable. The one thing that Dr. Zirkel has done a wonderful job of is pulling all of these people together. He communicates with everybody on a regular basis and I think that he's drawn these people together from these unlikely, with these unlikely connections that have been really, um, really nice to see. And I think Portland's just one, one little node and I think that they're kind of happening and growing all the time right now. I'm extremely humble about this because our success is due to the surgeons in developing countries. It's due to people here in Portland, Randy Hubner, Joel Gillard, and the Acumen staff have helped us a great deal as we have grown and have questions. We didn't know how to design. We didn't know how to manufacture anything when we started. And Randy was very helpful in the early stages of sign. We've been talking about sign here in Portland for quite a while, and I think just uh, just slowly it's it's caught hold. And there are a number of physicians, both at Emanuel and at OHSU, who have helped spread that word. So we're really happy that there's this second community kind of forming here uh, in Portland to support sign. Mm -hmm.